Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the iOS 14 beta has been out for the past two weeks now and in fact as of the making of this video we are currently on iOS 14 developer beta 2. So now that I've been spending some time with iOS 14 for this video I wanted to go over some of the things I like so far about it and some other things that I still think need improvements. Now one of the first things I want to talk about actually has nothing to do with any of the iOS 14 features or changes because the first thing I wanna talk about is the overall performance and stability of the iOS 14 beta. iOS 14 in beta one, and especially in beta two, has overall been running extremely smoothly for a beta. I haven't had any app incompatibilities, app crashes are extremely rare, and just the responsiveness and fluidity of the operating system are smooth to a point where I feel like it's better performing than the last version of iOS 13 I was on. Now don't get me wrong, this is still a beta and a developer beta at that, so to expect 100% optimization or 100% bug-free operating system at this point is a little bit unwarranted. And even with how well optimized it is, that could all change tomorrow depending on if Apple sends out a bad version 3, so I still don't recommend installing betas on your main device. But all I have to say is that based on my current usage, I am extremely optimistic that iOS 14 will be a much smoother operating system than when iOS 13 was released, so it looks like Apple has taken our feedback with just how bad the rollout of iOS 13 was. Secondly, I wanna talk about some of the bigger changes that users are gonna notice when they switch over to iOS 14. And this mainly has to do with widgets and the app library. Since the dawn of iOS, the operating system has always been a grid of icons on your screen. Well, now that's changing a little bit with the addition of widgets. Widgets for now are more data rich than just an app icon and can show information like weather, your calendar appointments, or your most recent notes, and a plethora of other information. Right now, because it's a developer beta and not open to the public yet, I am just limited to using Apple stock widgets and some of them are useful. For example, if you look at my home screen right now, I have my home screen set up to just have two widget squares on the top most row. For now, this consists of a weather widget in the top right and a calendar widget in the top left. Also in that calendar widget is another widget which is stacked on top of it, which is a reminders widget. That way I can scroll through and keep track of my latest appointments and reminders. Now, even though I am mostly liking the addition of widgets so far, I still have some complaints about them. Mainly, that is that they are just used right now to show information, which is great for apps like weather, calendar, and reminders, but some other widgets, I believe, should also include other controls. For example, the music and podcast widget just shows you podcast and music tracks, but even on the bigger widgets, there's no playback controls. I believe that these widgets should allow for more interactivity with them. Now I should also mention you can change the size of these widgets to take up more space so you can get a medium sized widget that takes up the entire top row or a giant widget that takes up four icon rows. I find the bigger widgets too big for my liking right now although they do give you much more information and data than the smaller ones. Apple also has a feature which they call the smart stack which will automatically switch through different widgets and that aims to surface the most relevant widget at the right time. Meaning if you had a calendar appointment in the next few hours, then theoretically it should automatically switch over to that widget. If there was supposed to be a rainstorm in an hour, the weather widget might show up as well. However, on the current beta at least, I have not found this automatic switching very helpful and would much rather pick which widgets I see on my phone. Another big change to how the overall system works is what Apple is calling the app library. Now you can set apps to automatically download to the app library and you can easily hide existing pages to cut down on the amount of digital clutter on your operating system. Right now I'm trying to go for the most minimal setup possible. I have just my homepage set up with the apps I use more frequently and those two widget spaces I mentioned before. And then as I swipe right, I get instant access to the new app library. From here, I usually either tap on the recent apps I downloaded, the Siri suggestions, or some of the other apps in the top section, like social, productivity, creativity, entertainment, and so on. However, those bottom level groupings are usually too much work to go sort through, at least for me, which is when I start to search on the top to find the app I am looking for. When you go into the search mode, there's also a new list view for when you're searching these apps. All of your apps are, of course, listed alphabetically, and you can scroll through them or even tap the letters on the side to quickly get to each 
letter categorization. However, I find that I'm not really scrolling through the list view, I'm just typing in the search field to find which app I'm looking for. Overall, I'm liking the addition of the app library as an easier way to sort through my apps rather than just having pages of cluttered apps. However, it's not all perfect, and I think Apple could also improve some aspects of this as well. On this version of the beta, Apple does not give you a way to set which categories you want shown in your app library and focuses more on automatically categorizing your content. I would like the option to customize these folders, or even if Apple doesn't let us choose our own categories, I would at least like to choose the order of the pre-organized categories they give you. After two weeks of use, some other additions that I like are what they're doing with the Messages app that really do help with grouped conversations. Now, I'm not really taking full advantage of this feature yet because most of the people I know are not on the iOS 14 beta, but I do like how I can now pin my favorite conversations to the top. This makes it much easier to keep track of the people I message most often and also some of my group messages. Also, while I'm not using this feature yet, I am eagerly awaiting iOS 14 launch day so I can fully use the new mention and inline reply features, especially especially for my crowded and busy group message threads because currently they can be kind of hard to follow along. There's also a lot of other quality of life and smaller improvements that Apple made with iOS 14. One of my favorite smaller improvements is the addition of picture in picture support that has been on the iPad for so long now and I'm very happy to see it finally on iOS 14. Any of the apps that already support a picture in picture on iPad are already supported on iPhone and iOS 14 meaning most of the video apps you use are probably already working, except for YouTube, which isn't working and has never worked on iPad. If you want YouTube to work though, you can open up Safari and enter picture-in-picture -picture through there. And YouTube, if you're watching, it is time to add picture-in-picture -picture support to your native application. You already do it on Android. I know you probably want the YouTube premium numbers for background audio, but I think most people subscribe to YouTube premium to get rid of the ads, not necessarily for background audio. So add picture and picture support YouTube, it's the right thing to do. I also like the additions in Control Center with HomeKit, so this makes it much easier to actually control HomeKit accessories. And for me, I'm able to easily toggle my lights on and off very quickly. I also really like the new compact call user interface for whenever you receive an incoming call. Having the whole screen being taken up seems like such a relic of the past for when we mainly used our cell phones as phones rather than the pocket computers and cameras that they have become. Now the same can't be said for the compact Siri user interface. That's because whenever you activate Siri, even though it is in a smaller form factor and it doesn't take up all of the content on your screen, it still does freeze up your phone and does not accept user inputs. And if you do try to interact with the screen, Siri deactivates, which I feel is the wrong way to do this experience. Sure, my content is no longer obstructed by the new Siri view, but I should still be able to continue messaging my friends, continue scrolling through a website, or navigate the user interface. This would really make Siri more of a helpful virtual assistant because if you have an assistant, you can continue to keep doing the tasks that you're doing and you can tell them to make notes, remind you of things, all without skipping a beat. So I really think that Apple should make it so that you can continue using the user interface even when you're using Siri. Other changes like Apple's commitment to privacy continue to be a welcome addition. Apple is now much more transparent about what your iPhone is actually doing and giving that information to the user. For example, if an app is now using your camera or microphone, you will now see a green or orange indicator in the top of the status bar. Or if an app takes information from your clipboard, a little notification pops up on the top of your iPhone. And already these iOS 14 privacy features, even though they are just in beta, have already started to change what kind of information companies collect on you. With TikTok and Reddit already saying that they plan to issue updates to stop collecting information from your clipboard. There's also still things I'm disappointed by because we just haven't seen them implemented in iOS 14 yet, but supposedly they are coming. That mainly has to do with the ability to change your default web browser or email client. This feature is still not activated in iOS 14 beta 2. This is a feature that is supposed to be coming, and again, it's a huge fundamental change to how iOS actually works. I assume that when this is eventually released in the developer beta, a lot of users will be happy, especially changing their default mail client, and I also expect Apple to open up even more applications to become the default in iOS 15. And overall, my experience of using the iOS 14 beta for the past two weeks now has been 
positive. There's a lot of improvements for iOS in this update. It's the first update since the original that changes what's on your home screen. The app library potentially will change the way most people use their iPhones. Other updates like app clips could potentially change our current interaction model with store apps, all while seemingly being the smoothest beta experience I have ever experienced from Apple. Hopefully that means when iOS 14 launches this fall, it will be a much better experience than we had with the infamous iOS 13 bugs. But anyway, that's what I think about the iOS 14 beta so far. Please let me know in the comments below, what do you think of iOS 14? What are some of your favorite features? And what would you like to see added to future versions of iOS? If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of those links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.